Hello, everyone, and welcome to another iteration of the Dare to be Fickle podcast. I am your host, Blaze, and I'm here with much less people and therefore much less clutter this time. This time, we have Wave once again. Uh, hey. Newcomer, Wambu. Hello. I'm Wambu. Uh, returning uh, once again is Jessinator, or Jasonator. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> And also a newcomer, Borquez, the creator of Palatine has Lost Guidance. Don't you disrespect me, little man. Don't you dare engage or deride. This is the second episode of the podcast, and things will be on the insane side. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. You can tell of the comic of this group. <laughs> yeah. You can tell that he's also the most pretentious one. I thought that was me. Oh, you know what? That is you, actually. He's, he's the second most pretentious. Yeah. Leave it up to the comments to determine it after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Everyone's, everyone's going to vote for me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. So, um, any games that you've been playing lately, guys? I picked up Speedrunners. That's a pretty good game. Oh, my God. I yeah. hate that game. Uh, I can play as the Scout, though, and it's fun. I like uh. it. Well, I've been convinced that at some point I'm going to actually have to go through the uh, Mega Man Zero collection. Oh my god. Oh no. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be borrowing it from a friend. He's going to take my copy of Star Force 3 in return because he actually saw it and was like, Whoa! I played the first game on 2! Uh, Star Force. Perfect. Uh, Star Force, what is that? Uh, you know how there's like five Mega Mans in Mega Seven. Man Man? Uh, seven, technically, but oh, okay. you're talking. Oh, you're t- oh, fun. you're talking about the Mega Man Star Force. Got it. I was just being- I was just asking for some context. Oh yeah, um, yeah, seven Mega Man, five in the Final Smash, and uh, yeah, he's the guy with um, he's the guy who has a red visor over his eyes and yeah, the, the that's actually visible um, and a hand for a head. Morquez, I want you to know that when I when I inevitably tackle uh, Mega Man X7 for so bad it's good, I'm gonna bring you onto it, okay? okay. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Seven or X7? X7. Oh, okay, good to know. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, Wabu. Uh, yeah. bit, my, uh, first of all, what the hell is wrong with you? X7 is not so bad, it's good. But explain yeah. to me what exactly you're talking about. Is that a new show you're doing here on Fanfickle? Uh, yeah, you already know about it. I don't, I, I'm gonna spoil the illusion. You already know about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is a new show. It is, it is a new show I'm doing on FanFickle. It's, um, the, I'm editing the first episode as we speak. Um, it's, it's basically s- sort of s- ga- game reviews that also assesses games based on the merits of being so bad it's good. <laughs> ah, I yeah. see. Can you, yeah. um, are you willing to give us a little taste on what the first episode is going to be? Uh, or God. do you want to keep it a surprise? You know, I would try and come up with a pun, but I'm not as good as that as, as Piku is. Oh. Me. <laughs> okay. um, PM is being to make... Oh, okay, you can. Yeah, I won't spoil it. Okay. He's coming. All right. Well, looking forward. Looking forward to it. Cool. Um, um, anything, anything else that's been going on? Uh, well, I met Eggman last week. Wait, what? Some, I, I met I met the voice actor for Eggman at the con, and I got him to sign my, uh, world-famous tweet. Oh, okay, Which uh, Eggman? Which Eggman? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. There's a, uh, Eggman's been voiced by a lot of guys lately, so which one? The person yeah. who's still doing it. Dying. Yeah, the official voice. I think the other two are dead. Oh. Um, no, there's one person who did it who was not dead, and that's Jim oh. Cummings. Jim Cummings did it in Sonic Sat AM. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, oh. you know that guy. He's the singer for, um... <laughs> he's the singer for, um, In the Dark of the Night and did a lot of Disney stuff. Yeah, but yeah. he's also but he also voiced Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. I don't think he voiced and, Winnie the Pooh, did he? Yeah, he did. And it was someone Dark else. Wing Duck. Oh, wait. Is Not the Dark original. Oh, no, no, wait. She um, he also... He's going. also voiced, uh, Pete from Goof Troop and Kingdom Hearts. That's Disney. <laughs> yeah, that's Disney. Oh, oh my God, he's done so many Disney things. What else he's has done, he done? I think he's he saying the second half movies. of "Be Prepared" and the Lion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was, he was, he was, he, was, he uh, sang part of uh, "Be Prepared." I, yeah, I was gonna bring that up. I wonder well, why, I I wonder why they brought him on and halfway through the. the well, it's actually 
uh, multiple people, including the Nostalgia Critic, have explained this. Um, um, Jeremy Irons did sing the first half of the song, and you can tell that it's him. And at a certain point, when they were getting all crazy, his voice flat out gave. He could not continue. And oh so my. Jim Cummings was brought on um, from background voices to do this all of a sudden, and he tried his best impression of, of um, Jeremy Irons, and it really worked out well to the point where they were like, dude, dude. we're like another Jeremy Irons. Yeah, but he only was when you're singing. And off. so they brought him on. If you listen really closely or have his ear as unfortunately trained as mine, you can easily tell when it's... um when the switch happens. Yeah. You could use him for the sequel. It's about, it's about <laughs> after the line. It's a little after the line. You won't get a sniff without me. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I, well, I, I suppose I have one thing of news. Uh, well, I didn't finish the thing with Eggman. Oh, okay, but... go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, Sorry I met Mike that. Pollock at the first con I've ever been to. So, uh, yeah, that was something. It, it was kind of sad, though, because they had like a panel before it about like anime magical girls, and the room was packed. And then when you got to the Mike Pollock panel, there was just one little table of like five people, including me. Three Aww. of them were little kids. What the hell? Did you, yeah. did you did you get to sell paper brand paper? Uh, no, but <laughs> he sold me evil ham. I'm sorry. I love that video you showed me. Oh yeah, thanks. It's uh, <laughs> it's basically that. maybe you can link it in chat. It's just yeah. a video I made for business class, and it actually helped me win Homecoming King somehow. But... My 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 favorite part was like. It was like, this paper's going into the oven, and let's see if paper brand paper can spend 10 seconds outside a microwave. <laughs> that, was, that was just all one take. I just find it. Yeah. That, that's going to be my legacy, the thing I took 20 minutes to make. Yeah. And I suppose I have one thing of news. Um, about a month ago, I placed, a, I placed an Amazon order for a Dark Pit Amiibo, and... Oh um, it was... It's in... It's in Japan... It was... It was in Japan, and, um... I got a notice about a week later that it had been shipped from Japan to where I am on the east coast of America <laughs> by land. What? What? Yes, I, I know. Physically, that doesn't seem possible unless you're either Jesus or walking along the the seafloor. But no, um, it, 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 it meant by it meant by whatever the hell, whatever boat was there, there would just have to be a few phone calls made. And I'm currently holding it in my hand. It just arrived. Two days after I after we they asked us, um, did it arrive safely? And um, it was too. And when they told us, it was too late for me to respond. What with an upcoming holiday, so I could not get it refunded. And I could not get a second one of these. So, oh uh, well, I'm holding wonderful. it out, and I've named it Biggs. <laughs> That's way too that, much trouble for a dark pit. Yeah, uh. it, it only cost me 18 bucks. So. At least, when you said, okay. At least the biggest hassle was the weight. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was I thinking mean, when you said uh, by land, I was thinking like, like they're gonna build a bridge all the way to <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. The great it's like, bridge it's like, of like, dog pit. They're just like, oh, we don't, we don't have any like airships. We need to send. We need to build a bridge all the way. The bridge, <laughs> the bridge of eBay. The bridge of eBay. World peace achieved thanks to Dark Pit. Okay. So, like, and Dark Pit has united. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, All right. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna waste any more time. I say. I say we just jump right into it. Um. Since uh, it is the month of Halloween, and ironically also breast cancer awareness. That's weird. There's one to get you thinking. Yeah. That, that's what my com was about, though. Was, Our topic yeah. is 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 breast cancer in horror games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, too soon, no, too okay. soon, D too soon. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I, I first I'm sorry. off, the room <laughs> video game. I will never forget that Claudia moment where she says, "Oh, she what?" <laughs> I definitely have breast cancer. <laughs> that's a <laughs> yes, it's a video. The room has a video game. Yes. It, what? Yes. No, no, it's again, a game. Again, so does Lame is a Rob, so. Wait, Lame Miz has a game? <sighs> Lame Miz has a fighting game. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Does, uh... But back to horror. Yeah, right, okay. So the topic of this podcast is um, what is horror? Or what do you think should define horror? 
Well, first off, it's horrible. <laughs> Wabu, no. why don't you start? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was like kind of cogitating on this for a, a while, because I was thinking, like some some people say like, oh, you know, it just has like horror themes in it, but I'm like, no, that's not true, because look at something like like Walking Dead, where it's like it has horror themes, but it's not a horror game. So. Yeah, if, more, if, more if, like, if, it's more like just a, a story-based it, adventure. It's, a, it's an interactive story, so to me, I think it's when it's when the, hor the horror elements are at the forefront, when that's like, when they're like the focus, you know, if that, if that makes sense. Hmm, like, yeah, like, yeah. like if you, like, when you play certain horror games, it's like, they, they really grab you through, you know, your circumstance or your your atmosphere or something. So it's like like the horror elements are really pushed to the forefront of the of the game. If, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's that. Uh, Jace, do you have anything um, on it? Jace. Oh um. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, you're you, you're here. <laughs> oh yeah. What, yeah. What really defines horror? Uh, I'll I'll be back in a minute. Uh oh. Okay, All wait right. a minute. Uh, what, so the, the question is, what is horror? What is horror? Horror to me is how you can get your audience to crap their pants in any kind of variety of way. But oh, as so like, you, okay, so you're so you think um, horror is about being scared? Yes, okay. horror is about being scared. Ever since back down when me and my friends played Silent Hill 2, we just <laughs> yes. We yes. scared our fucking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, Saru, an example of that also, but I don't see much of horrors in any double A games nowadays. I only see variety of horrors in most indie games. Oh, you Whether mean it be AAA like, games, okay. but like some formulas have been done to death when you're like developing a horror indie game, like like years ago when. During high school, I know, like, Slenderman game had been a freaking rage all the time. Oh, about. God, Slenderman. I'm back and I hear something about Slender. Yeah, oh, and, like, boy. back in high school, I We're know... We're going I, there! I've seen, like, people with laptops playing that game during in the halls. <laughs> yeah, well, and then, like... What, what was another horror game then? Well, not... Well, I'll get to FNAF later, but... Amnesia? Uh, after, oh, yeah, Amnesia, that game. I now well, own it. I had some. Amnesia was like a whole friggin' hype up when PewDiePie is just <laughs> pretending to get scared of crap open, like posting videos of himself crapping his pants on his vines. So I don't know. <laughs> and then, and, the, and <laughs> then Markiplier and Tiny Box Tim happened. And uh, then let's players are born. Yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, then uh, FNAF came, and then I don't know what else is about to come. I, yeah. <laughs> I if I'm missing something, just tell me. I, I'll, the only horror, like, stuff that's been, like, happening throughout my life has been, like, the Slenders, the fucking FNAF. I, and, I, well... I'm missing something. Oh, there. Oh yeah, you're definitely missing something. There's plenty of other things to talk about. Um, Wave, what I, do you think? Uh, oh, horror. Let me tell you about horror. <laughs> uh, well, when I was you, a little that's kid... A, that's a terrible start. It's everything, like, oh god. Everything pretty much scared me. I was a what? Really? Yes. What, did Winnie the Pooh scare you? Kind of? It scared <laughs> me at really? yeah. point, but then again, the editing when was just good. When people in giant Tigger costumes came towards me, or when I was at Disney World, the friggin' guy in the Mickey Mouse costume scared me. Oh. So, true horror to me is something that bothers you way after until you see it. Like, you could see a giant monster popping up. But you're not going to be staying up all night thinking about, oh, I'm afraid a giant zombie's going to pop up when I have dreams of walking through a maze. But, you know, do you think that's something that just, like, kind of scared, like, do you think that's something you could really, like, kind of define as horror or just something that subjectively, like, yeah. scares you? Because, like, well, I, know, I know a lot of people are afraid of, like, some really silly things in games, like the frickin' uh, piano from Mario uh, 64. But that scared the shit out of me when I, I first saw it! Well, exactly! <laughs> it, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't scare me, but it scared you. 
something else. I'm gonna get to that. Aura is like a subjective thing. People have different fears, yeah. and different things are gonna scare them. That's why there's people who are like terrified, like at paranormal activity booths and stuff. Uh, there's just some people who just laugh their asses off. Like because me. <laughs> people aren't scared by stuff like that, but then they'll see something like that's why there's different horror subgenres. There's like uh, I can't name them right now. I know there's like psychological and. There, okay, there's like psychological, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. paranormal. Uh, that, that's what's Wikipedia. I, I, thought, I thought you were doing a zombie sound for a second. Like, I thought that was your way of oh, trying to speak zombies. We, we lost more. Oh no. Oh no. Man down. Man you down. all day for him. No. Right. Let's, let's see if we can get him back on the call. The. Oh. Oh man, I got like one bar on my signal. I'm not, I hope no one's trying to download anything on my end. Oh, oh he'll, he'll join us. Nobody's downloading your porn. The lame is fighting game. I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't care. If Javert starts singing at me, I'm gonna shit my pants. Okay. Okay, I, I, I got knocked out for. A, I got knocked out thanks to a real life phone call. I come back and I hear something about Javert. And I'm jumping. No, I'm not gonna get through. And I'm jumping. You'll never get my name. No, this is not. Red boss on me, I swear. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's just for me stupid YouTube. Uh, but uh, I found a TV tropes page that has like all the uh, has a bunch of horror subgenres. There's a cosmic horror about human insignificance. Uh, oh, that's oh, that would that's where that's that's H.P. Lovecraft special. Yeah, there's a uh, gothic horror, the oldest subgenre of horror, which I'm guessing is like uh, vampires, Victorian. Yeah, yeah, vampires, vampires Bram Stoker stuff. Well, <laughs> there's something I've been wanting to say for a little while now because um, <laughs> I'm gonna be perfectly frank. The part of the big reason I'm not a fan of horror. Is because it neither scares me nor makes me laugh in the slightest. Um, final. No, not final. Five Nights at Freddy. I wish it was Final Nights at Freddy's. Um, <laughs> yeah. but um, uh, you know what that did? It it the whole thing except for maybe a couple of the really really bad puns made on game theory videos that made me roll my eyes. The whole thing just made me bored. I was actually bored by it, and I and wow, that, okay, that, 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 that's, that actually puts a good point down into the subjective horror thing, anyway. Yeah, that means I that mean, specific type of horror doesn't scare you. I mean, it's not just that. I mean, we take other movies like, um, like I've, I've seen a Saw movie. I forget which one. It was a long time ago. Was uh, I scared? It's always just torture porn. Uh, can you can you describe what the scene was? I might be able to point it out. <laughs> it's um, okay. It was one of the scenes where it was it was ironically one with an actual saw in it, um, a buzz saw, no less. And um, details are a bit blurry, but I mean I don't remember it that well, but I do remember my reaction to it. I was like, um, I, I mean I turned to my. I turned to my friend who was uh, watching it next to me, and I was like, "Okay, am I supposed to be scared? Am I supposed to be sad? Am I supposed to be... Oh yeah, yeah, blood and gore. I love that stuff." No, I think no, that's I, I didn't know what to, I didn't know how to react because oh. it neither scared me and it, it didn't entertain me. And, and it's a lot, and there are a lot of other things like that. Um, um, well, you know, Mark, I think, like, the only thing is, like, so far, the things that we've all really been listing have been things that, like, yeah. people sort of disassociated from being all that scary at this point. It's like we've mentioned Slando, we've mentioned Five Nights at Freddy's, you mentioned Saw. It's like, they're all things that, like, people... Like, they're things that are, like, technically horror, but, but but really don't have much of a reputation for being all that scary, like, now. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street, I would say, has a bit of a reputation. Well, we haven't mentioned that yet. Well, yeah, it's camp. <laughs> I've, uh... because, I've, because I know a lot about Nightmare on Elm Street, at least in terms of what styles they have. I haven't really worked up enough interest to watch I mean... one of the movies, read one of the comics, or 
play any of the games. Yeah, there are games. I mean, so far, the only game we've actually really mentioned that still, like, has a reputation for being all that scary is uh, Silent Hill 2. And yeah. Amnesia. And okay, Amnesia. And there is yeah. another. There is another game that I will mention. It, believe it or not, is a Star Trek video game. Um, that is actually that is actually quite a lot of elements in horror in it. It is called Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Oh uh, my a, God! I remember that game. It is a very good game, and I gotta and I gotta say, what I liked about it was more the exploration factor. The um. Uh, what am I thinking of? The um, well, it's using a lot of casting characters from my favorite of the Star Trek series. I enjoy that, but the horror aspects, um, such as you know, gloom and the whole gloom, doom, scaring monsters, scaring monsters, and even the more subtle kinds, such such as um, someone dying, someone dying of an in infection of disease, someone else just going so crazy he attacks his own. His own teammates. I felt that those really didn't appeal to me as something I should receive any form of shock by, as much as things that a better plot can be worked by building from it. Mm. And that's well, that's awesome. And that's something that really, if anything, makes me wish I enjoyed horror a lot more than I do because I could enjoy the lot that <laughs> game a lot more. Well, two things. You know, how you said five nights of Freddy's didn't scare you. Well, the yeah. jump scares didn't scare me, the animatronics themselves scared me, because, like I said before, Mickey Mouse costume and, uh, Uncanny Valley. Yeah, I was not scared by the animatronics. Yeah, it's just, it's just because something, like, I remember, like, when I was a kid, I had this vivid nightmare. I think I was specifically in Disney World. I, I remember being on the Figment ride for some reason, I, I don't know why. But then I went into this basement, and this, like, thing grabbed me from behind, and it was, like, this stuffed animal my sister had. And I was, like, scared shitless of it for, like, months. Mm -hmm. To the point where I actually threw it in the garbage once. I oh, jeez. Yeah. Did you get in trouble about... <laughs> But I, I'm kind of past the fear. Like, if anything, like... Things like that kind of freak me out. But, I'd say look out behind you, but it would be pointless. <laughs> the, the core horror, like, I think a theme in all of horror that makes it horror is the theme of the unknown. Where... Yeah. What makes it scary is you don't know what's going on and you don't know how to stop it. Yeah, the thing is, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, as an example, it's like... Like, you, like there's a bunch of people who would describe this scary, but above all else, I think it's I think it's a stressful game. Like... Yeah, oh, like I it's, um... Like it's, like, it's really, like, when you lose track of one of the animatronics, that's, like, a really intense feeling of, like, Oh, shit, I'm gonna get, like, jump-scared in a second, where do I go? You know, like, what do I do? What do I do? Where do I? F where is it? Like, it's, it's, it's more stressful than anything. And it's like, well, people can definitely get scared while playing it. I think it's that like feeling of intensity that yeah. is kind of, that is kind of more persistent in uh, Five Nights at Freddy's than a uh, horror. It's funny you. It's funny that you mentioned that. Actually, I can hear myself. Actually, um, it's funny you should mention that because I actually uh, did an editorial on that on my channel once about is Five Nights at Freddy's actually scary? Yeah. And and you brought up some of the same points that I did about about is it scary or is it just stressful? You know? Yeah. Um. But um. Everyone, uh, uh, you all, you, everyone, all of you seem to be convinced that horror needs to be scary. Um, Not really. Well, I mean, I, I feel that horror is a matter of shock of any kind. I feel that it doesn't have to necessarily be scary. It could, it could, it could just be something that surprises you. Like if it's something that really, really catches you off guard, but it's I, like a birthday party that could still, that could still count as, count, count somewhere within horror. Uh, I don't. I don't think it even needs to be surprising. I just think there needs to be. Su I just. Need, I just think. Um. Okay. Anyways. Um. What I mean by this is that, to me, a, the best definition of 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 a of horror can be summed up in one game. And the game. And that game is called Limbo. Oh mm. boy. Yes. I know uh, where you're going with this. Limbo isn't scary it's not it doesn't try to be scary it doesn't it doesn't try to jump scare you in any way it doesn't ha it doesn't have any 
um, grim, doesn't have any uh, shocking imagery or anything like that. that well, well it, it does. It you stay up that night. It, it, do, gonna... it does have shocking imagery, though. It does. No, no, no. It has shocking implicit imagery. That's the point. Yes, that what is the point. What do you mean That's, by it, That doesn't mean there's imagery. no shock in it. It's it's implying something yeah. that would be shocking. Even what do you mean by you actually see it? What well, do you mean what, by implicit? Uh, all right. Well, what I mean is that the entire game doesn't have any actual imagery in it. The, 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 the whole style is is it's just black and white and you play a, and everything you see is a silhouette uh this like the the your main char your main character is a silhouette the environment is a silhouette and anything that isn't important is usually white or gray something something that you can't interact with or in the background it's gray anything that that if it's an obstacle or it's an, or if it's something you can interact with it's black so everything blends in together. Right. Well, you said. Well, you said before. You, you you didn't finish what you were saying before about what makes it horror. So, if that's the if that's the case, like if 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 Limbo doesn't scare you and it doesn't have any stressful like imagery to you, then what 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 classifies Limbo as horror? What what it classifies in horror is its atmosphere. It's it's lingering sense of dread throughout the entire game it's well, it's a it's very oppressive it's very bleak very somber like everything everything is either dead or wants you dead this is this is a very hostile world full of full of um uh like desperate people who want to kill you giant or giant spiders that want that wrap you up in webs or or factories that fill up with water that could drown you in an instant it's it's just very oppressive, very harsh, aggressive. Or and... a fast food restaurant that wants to fatten you up. <laughs> in a of... Oh no, the horror! I'm getting another pound. I can't help myself. Super size me. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys are making oh, fool. That. That's, that. that's, a, that's a scary thing. Okay, yeah, it, it, it really is Not scary. I mean, I mean, okay, but. You know, there is one there is one question about horror that I've um, often run into, and I want to see what you guys think about this because um, what sets up when it comes to you know monsters like just monsters in general, what sets apart a monster such as a werewolf, vampire, the stereotypical ones like that? What sets a scary one? apart from a simply dramatic one like one that's one who's like step who's just state of being goes from being frightening to being just a form of storytelling well i think i well i think the ultimate the ultimate um the characteristic that defines something from being scary to being uh to being a storytelling element is the fact that First of all, the car the the monster needs a personality. Yeah. He, well, he, need, he needs he, he needs screen time. He needs dialogue, and he need and he needs some, and he's, or at the very actually, least, he needs some he, he needs something implicit that get that makes him it makes it feel like it needs to be stopped. I'm gonna you hear that, that Shyamalan. It's it's it's, 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 it's shine the example of how, why you shouldn't show the monster too much. The movie Alien. <laughs> Which was the, uh, the alien resurrection, more like. Well, not resurrection, the first alien. Just on the ship, straight up space horror movie. They don't show it fully until the very end when it's basically overpowered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's, I think, I think, I think it, about horror that's different. Like, in most other movies, if you want to make a villain threatening, you show him a lot, you build him, or at least a villain. Uh, I don't want to say frightening. I just want oh, to okay, say... a scary villain versus a storytelling villain. Yeah. Um, um, I've right. seen Sesame Street episodes that do a better job than most Stephen King films. Uh, I think it's. I think it's. I think they it's... all float. Well, that's the thing. Like they don't. You see the clown throughout the movie, but do they really explain anything about the clown? Raha, raha, raha. They don't. Raha. He's, just, he's just there, and that's. The... I think. Oh, they eventually explain him, and then it ruins the whole thing. Can I? Yeah, can I? Can I say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, uh, oh my god. 
I think I think I think the reoccurring thing in like each of our opinions on this is you know contextual relevance. It's like if you have if you have a scary bird, like a scary looking bird. For a while, it's just, it's nothing but a scary-looking bird. But if you hear, like, earlier in the movie or video game or whatever, that a scary-looking bird brings, is like a harbinger of the end of the world or something like that, then that scary-looking bird is, is even scarier because you know, you know, it's purpose. Yeah. Oh, you, oh you know there's, it, you know what there's it's already a movie for that. There's yeah. So there's like, already a movie for that. You know what it's called? Birds. The Birds. <laughs> mm. it's called for by I mean, I mean, I mean, the scary-looking bird thing was just like an example. But it's, but, it, but, it, but it's, it's like coming down to a matter of context where you know. I don't think it, Chase was done talking. So sorry. Yeah, he can't. Oh, so, sorry. Jace, were you done talking? Yeah, I'm done talking. Oh. Okay, just to clear that <laughs> I, I was saying like when a monster is just a monster, then that's when it's like. It doesn't really have much weight or impact, but you know when, when like when you see its actions or you you kind of as, as Blaze said, you kind of understand its personality a bit. That's when I think it really becomes like a, a more genuine monster. Yeah. Well, the thing about monsters in horror, like it, the thing that sets horror apart than a lot of other things, is that the bad guy usually has the upper hand for most of the movie. Like, if it's an action movie, well, it, it could happen like in an action movie, but in an action movie there's usually one bad ass who's kicking ass the whole time. Sorry, I, I don't know why it was repetitive, but there's a bad ass kicking ass the entire time, or pretty, basically every other movie. Like, the bad guy could have the upper hand, but... Most of, most, of, most of the time yeah. in an action movie, the hero and the, and the bad guy are usually equals. equals. Yeah. I, but in horror, that way. the bad guy is significantly stronger, sometimes even unstoppable. Or, yeah, there, or there isn't a bad guy at all, such as in Silent Hill, too, oh, to I, be exact. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one of the big, ex speaking of Silent Hill, I think one of the, one of the kind of, one, one really good example of what we're kind of talking about here is Eddie from Silent Hill 2, and I'm gonna spoil stuff, so I guess put a little a spoiler tab. It's like a ten-year-old. It's, it, it, it's, it's right it's, above it's, my head. But you know, Eddie. Eddie is like, he's a mean old at, Yeti. Yeah. At first, he's <laughs> at first he's just like some guy who's in the town with you, and he's like, you don't really think too much of him. You're just like, oh, someone else is in the town with me. His first then, impression is that it doesn't exactly set him apart from anyone else. That's for sure. Let's yeah, get snow he's, cones. He's, he's just kind of. He's just kind of, he's just kind of there. But then once you see he's killed people, and you see he's re he's really like lost his rocker. That's when it's like he starts looking less like a human and more like a monster to the, to the player. He's also the only human, uh, the only human that you actually have James kill, if, yeah. if you noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything, everything else is is either is either, like, not real or a manifestation of the town. Yeah. Oh, or it happened in the past. Spoilers. <laughs> either way, it's the Mario 2 approach. Yeah. yeah. Except oh, except God, Silent Hill does the dream right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, come on. Peach floating was cool. <laughs> and canon. She does it and in... Yeah, she does it in Mario 3D World, too. Took a while. <laughs> Took a while. And Mario X beat him to it, but either way. Oh, she oh god, I've had something at the tip of my tongue for a while. You know, I'm guessing a lot of you are going to disagree with me on this, but I think there is one thing that is the perfect representation of non-scary horror. Uh-oh. Uh oh, Scooby Dooby Doo. Where that's are not, you? It's not a freaking horror movie. From you that's not, that's that's not, the, not meant the to be movie. horror. Not the movie. Uh, Cabin not in the, the movie. It has Shaggy. This show, the Basically. original show. The show wasn't yeah. really horror, that though. Not, yeah. I mean, be before horror. they started getting guest stars in every episode. Uh. It's to be horror. It was a mystery show. It was never really horror. It, never a mystery. Old Man Withers? Yeah, that, that's never. That's not really horror. Like Mr. Withers, oh, it was a kid 
like they like like that show got clearly. away with it too if it had been for you made your kids and your stupid dog that show clearly <laughs> wasn't intended to be scary at all though not to mention if you noticed every character in in the show never intends to kill anyone they just want to scare people if you want a real horror movie in the scooby-doo universe look uh, no Google, look I no bet. further than zombie island Oh that, my that, god! That oh, shit was awesome. Shit. That was that was or, actually. The first or you could go to, or you could go to, like towards the end of Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. As oh. far downhill as I think that show went, and I know other people will agree and disagree with me on that. There were more than just lives on the stake towards there. Again, major spoiler, but that tag up of my head. This towards the end of that show. They inc they had they had a brush with freaking reality. Uh, and it yeah. Wasn't, and, yeah, they and, went they went full Lovecraft on our asses. And didn't this they? wasn't just the first time. Scooby Doo and the Scooby Doo. One, it was one of the witch based things. I have the book version. Yeah, the yeah. Book, Scooby Doo Zombie Island. No, it was a it was based on it was based on a witch. The witch's ghost. Yeah, which is uh, that ghost. again? They were there. Were there seriously was the intent to kill or at least banish souls, or at least Zombie banish Island. souls from bodies, which is an effective, which is like an exorcism style way of killing. It was freaking intense, and and then that ending, and then that end, and then that ending. I don't really want to get into. Let, let's just say it completely shat on everything you ever got invested in on Mystery Incorporated if you got invested at all. Wait a minute. Well, I got invested don't the live but action not in mean, what they Scrappy were hoping for. tried to kill everyone. And you bring in a typical uh, crazy clown demon and it does not solve everything. I had more faith I had more faith in the in that I had more faith in um, something voiced by Gilbert Gottfried to be to be the to be a demon, and not just because it was voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> not a good enough reason in my book. Yeah. Well, uh, huh. speaking of uh, something that's in Lego Dimensions, are you uh, guys hyped for Jaws 19? Jaws 19. What? what? Jaws 19? Okay, okay well, he's giving us a link. He's, is, he's is giving he us a link and oh dear god, what? You cannot be serious. This is... Okay, you know what? We're, let, let's react to this outside of the podcast. Is, but... is, is, is he not trolling? No, no, the video's there. Watch it. Oh my god. It's, you, no, know what? The still, there. you know what? If I'm you still recording. If you don't get the joke immediately, you're gonna get it by the end. Okay, we'll... we'll... We'll put a link in the description, but in the meantime... Back, back to the Future 2. Back to the Future 2. That's a joke. It's 2015. Great Scott! Right? 2015. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Yeah, it's, remember that. Yeah. We got out hoverboards. Yeah, okay. We got out <laughs> wild gunmen on the <laughs> <laughs> oh, There was There was uh, one time in this podcast where uh, we were talking about horror... Oh my god, I remember Jaws that! How have you horror. been? <laughs> it has. Shaw is a horror movie monster. They don't show it in the movie. And it so, yeah, yes, but horror movie. Can we all top. agree that Jaws 4 was a romance? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Oh god, I sound like a villain. Uh, I met my first girlfriend over Jaws 4. So what? I agree with him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm, 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 I'm trolling. I'm trolling. Well, legitimately, my parents ah. made a Rocky 4. Oh my and god. And I, uh. Well, my mother forced my father to go to Star Wars 4. Or wait, no, it was the other way around. Sorry, mother. <laughs> hey, it's so um, relevant. 4 is like. And she knew that Death Darth like Vader was Luke's father really, really early in that movie. Oh, whoa. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. He must have looked on Wikipedia before. No, no. It, it, it wasn't Wikipedia in 1970. That's what they were watching, I think. I mean, come on. They, they must have, like, they must have, like, known about that. It's, like, one of the most, like, <laughs> infamous movie twists of, like, all time. Or, like, yeah, but this is why it was still in theaters. Like, I remember every night, my like, parents would, like, hit my head and say, remember, Snape's going to kill Dumbledore. Mm. Yeah, like, like, you're not gonna... So, sorry, I guess let's get back to that. Ah, speaking of... Oh, sorry. No, you can go, you can go. Speaking of who killed Dumbledore, I remember 
high school being one of the years where Twi Twilight was a fucking fan. Uh, uh, there were shell books of Twilight in one of the classrooms I used to I used to frequent. Uh, I think I'm having an aneurysm out. thinking back like how long ago that was. <laughs> you know what? I... Bella Swan is more of a horror villain than Freddy Fazbear. You know, you know they're making a, a gender swap version for the 10th anniversary of. I'm Twilight. done. I'm done. I'm done. Are you I, shitting I, I, me? I, I, that's it. No. Are you shitting me? No. I'll give you the link. Oh my god. Mark, Mark, we've we've lost Mark again. Okay, I'm just gonna look at this right here. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just. just <laughs> Eddie Tim Buford. <laughs> so what? Edward's the human now, and and Bella's the vampire. I I, I have no friggin' idea. No no no. Oh uh, wait. No no. The boy is the hero. No, they're still the same. Like Eddie, or however you pronounce it, is a vampire, and Buford's gonna be a human. It's just gender swapped. Exactly. It's probably gonna be the same exact book. You know, now that I think about it. Didn't this already happen in a movie that wasn't made or written by Stephanie Meyer? Didn't this didn't this story kind of all get done in a movie like that um you know war between two war between two races and someone and someone from each race falls in love with a guy? Avatar. Uh, what? No, no. <laughs> God, no. Um. No, um, no, but it, but it, it's still supernatural. I think they took the alien approach. Um, God, sure I know it's not Avatar. I don't know. I'm, I, I, I can't think of what it is, but I know I've, I, I know I've uh, seen reviews With the of blue it. Cat people. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, I, it's okay, gonna have so. Sequels. Sorry, sorry to like bring this all the way back, but uh, uh. Blaze, I feel like you got like kind of like cut off a little bit when you were making your uh, argument earlier about horror. Like, did you have anything else to add to that? No, if, if I did, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> oh no! Leave. Oh yeah. well, let's get let's get let's get the brain wrench. Open your head. <laughs> hey, hey, ow! Ow! <laughs> Fuck! Eddie, let me go back to my home. Oh my god. <laughs> Eddie, still... let me go back to my home. No, die. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like scary monsters. Creatures crawl and shed the blood to terrorize your neighborhood. And whosoever shall be found without a soul for getting down must we stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell. Uh, it's from like a obscure song called uh, "Thriller" by Michael Jackson. <laughs> a foul stench is in the air. The oh, funk of forty thousand years. No grisly ghouls that was, from every tomb. Wasn't that, didn't to Vincent Price say that? Yeah, and yeah. thought, though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to sever. For no mere mortal can resist the evil of the thriller. Da 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 da! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, my laugh is terrible. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna. Fucking Halloween. You, 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 you got, you guys are nerds. Yeah, shut up, dirtbag. <laughs> dirtbag. God. The very the ultimate console. monster. Uh, dirtbag. <laughs> all right. Uh, so do you? Uh, okay, so if we're if we're all in agreement, would you say that this is that this is a a wrap? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. No, I, I uh, think the podcast. What I had for dinner was a wrap. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, well, welcome to the welcome to the month of Halloween, everybody. Uh, future <laughs> podcasts will be aired shortly, and no, there will not be a Halloween themed Palutena's Lost Guidance. Maybe yeah, next I'm sorry. year. Sorry, <laughs> we are not doing that. I have written a ton of scripts already, and I'm going to stick to it. 
Actually, I have, I have do, If you want a lost guidance, I can write your it. own. Send it to us. <laughs> Maybe we'll look at it. Probably be too busy, but I'd like to see what you guys come up with. I, I, I I, I'm, real, that, I'm, I'm really looking for ideas for future skits. I have a, I have a question about that, actually. Um, Because, uh... Have you written scripts for, like, characters outside Smash Bros? I don't want to answer that question right now. Um, I tried writing one for I a character feel that, that was in another will be answered at a point in the future, like in future episodes. Um, and, um, but the next update on things we will be, you know, adding to... Uh, what we've done so far will come at the end or simultaneously released with um, of ep um, for episode four. Yeah, let's just okay. Let's just say that we're not going to stop with the first four. Yeah, yeah we have something. Okay. We have something in mind. We have yeah. something okay. in mind. Yeah, he you're, he might be an all star. Mm. No, with that not Shrek. <laughs> With that being said, this has been uh, the Dare to be Fickle podcast, episode two. Uh, what do you think horror is, in your opinion? Leave a like and and subscribe to this channel, and leave this, leave a comment on, in the boxes below to tell us what you think of what horror is. In if meantime, you answer horrifying, I will give you a cookie. I don't care if that's Fang Stick. I'm gonna do it. Don't get spooked. No, every now everyone's gonna answer with horrifying. Unless they didn't <laughs> actually listen to the podcast. I know. I mean. <laughs> that way <laughs> actually actually uh ads are horrifying would actually be a quick way of verifying the, the, the fact if the audience listened or not <laughs> <laughs> True. actually just end, okay everyone and every comment with eddie let me go back to my home just very well time, no matter what it is just huh? and press enter a couple times make it scroll down and hey let me go back to my home okay, that's how you everyone. watched it this has been the uh, this has been the Dare to Be Fickle podcast. And, uh, Bye, everyone. We are watching you as you sleep. <laughs> 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 huh. I'm not. Uh, I'm not creepy like that. I need a new career. Okay, that was good.